For all you armchair activists, this is how you approach a situation regarding warfare, psychologically, spiritually, and physically, geographically, in whatever aspect. This is a practical, tactful approach that is going to be conveyed by my man, Kane Carter, also known as Hot Damn I Rock. Been getting a lot of mixed reviews about my last post concerning the Freddie Gray situation in Baltimore. One nigga didn't like the Million Man March example that I used. He was like, well, what did that change? Think about what you're saying, my nigga. Do you honestly believe out of the 800,000 plus people that attended that rally, no change came out of it? How many niggas ain't dead, in jail, taking somebody's life for some shit because of something that they heard that changed their whole fucking outlook on life? Niggas that became fathers after that and passed on knowledge from that day to their child. Or how about the niggas that didn't even go but came in contact with somebody that did that day? Things that were said at that rally, things that were said a hundred fucking years ago, will be passed on forever. Pebbles in the water, my nigga. You have no idea how far those ripples reach. Some people liked what I had to say. Others thought I was coming off too soft. But one of the first things I said in the beginning of that video, I am all for fucking some shit up if it got us closer to a solution. 15 officers hurt, 6 hospitalized, 144 vehicle fires, 15 structural fires, and nearly 200 arrests. Where's the solution? After all that damage and destruction, what did we really accomplish? This is why I said think about how you look. Is whatever the fuck you're about to do gonna make the situation any better? I support the message that's trying to be sent. Police brutality will not be tolerated. But what I don't support is the way that we're trying to go about sending it. Because this isn't a message. This is chaos. Niggas saying they tired of being peaceful, but you not disciplined enough to be violent. You in the streets angry, ready to wage war and shit, but you don't know what war should look like. People who win wars understand the science behind it. To them, war is an art form. But to the average nigga throwing a brick through a fucking liquor store window, war looks like this. The message you're trying to convey, the point you're trying to get across, we will never win. And it's not because we're not strong enough, and it damn sure ain't because we're outnumbered. You probably never thought about this, but there are more civilians walking the face of this planet than there are organizations set in place to enforce the laws that we all follow. But even in knowing that, why is it that we still lose? Baltimore, Ferguson, every other place that shit like this happens but we just don't hear about? Because we are not fucking organized. Police are organized. Military are organized. Fucking drug cartels are organized. They're structured. That's why they thrive. We lack organization because we don't have a leader. We out here rioting and shit, but we have no general to rally behind. We're not prepared to be violent. The police have a captain. The military have a president. When you out in the streets fucking up businesses and vandalizing shit, Who's in charge? That's why it looks sloppy and chaotic. That's why it's no direction. That's why when we do shit like this, nothing ever gets solved. Your general would have a vision and a strategy to execute it. That's where organization would come from. You don't have a leader. And without one, we just a bunch of niggas fucking up the community. Destroying an entire mall. For what? Looting businesses. For what? Burning down a $15 million nursing home that took eight years to build. For what? What did we accomplish? Your general would have said, the justice system has failed us. I'm tired of being peaceful. City Hall, burn it down. Every police station in Baltimore City, burn it down. Find out where those five cops live. Handle it. You can't get him? Take care of his family. Spread him out in front of the door so that's the first thing he sees when he walks in his house. That's what war should look like, physically and psychologically. Are you really ready to follow a general who's prepared to be violent? I don't think you are. Because if we were, this is the type of shit that would have been done already. These are the type of violent acts that would have got the message across. Police brutality will no longer be tolerated. Not looting a CVS and breaking into a fucking check cashing place. Now, I am in no way, shape, or form telling anybody to go out and do any of these things. I just want you to understand that we're not prepared for them the way that they're prepared for us. When we do shit like riot and lash out, we don't focus any of that aggression. You're angry, you're hurt, you're tired of being peaceful, I get that. But we not ready to be violent, and nobody's damn sure not ready to be a general. Because the cost you pay to lead people 
people is your life. Martin Luther King didn't die because he was too peaceful. I couldn't believe a nigga said that shit to me on Twitter. Martin Luther King died because he was a leader. He had power. Look at anybody in history that was assassinated, yo. They were powerful. Malcolm X was powerful. Nat Turner was powerful. Fucking Hitler was powerful. So it doesn't matter if your intentions are positive or pure evil. If you're in a position to control the masses, you are fucking dangerous and somebody's not gonna like it. The only way we win is if we're ready to die for it. Cops win because they're ready to die in the line of duty. Soldiers win because they're ready to die for their country. Terrorists win because they're willing to die for their religion. Are you prepared to die for the change you feel you so desperately deserve? Probably not. That's why we don't have no leaders right now, yo. Who do we have? Al Sharpton? Jesse Jackson? Ain't nobody following them niggas. So you don't have a general to enforce peace, and you don't have a general prepared to violently wage war against the system that we all hate. Until we have a leader with a vision and a strategy to execute it who is willing to sacrifice his life, we will never be organized, and we will never win. No leader, no plan, no fucking progress. Period.